All right, so I'm just trying to get the old engine head off so we can put the new one on. But these head bolts are always pretty tight. There we go. Put the new head on the engine. The trick is not to catch any mosquitoes underneath it. Brand new engine head, new injector line, new injector. Very nice. So I'm just checking the valve clearance on the engine now, and it seems a little loose. That's a feeler gauge of 0.3 millimeters thick, and you can see there's plenty of slack still in the system. So I've got to tighten that up a bit. See if the engine still works. Fingers crossed. Nope, doesn't work. I'm just about to start painting off where the chafe marks are on the side of the brain. Just installing the temperature gauge for the engine. We're just getting ready to set up a campfire on the ice and the boys are going to go fishing and I'll do the campfire. Yes. Oh. Look at that for a cod. It was a great barbecue. Chris and Luke caught three awesome codfish and Chris chopped them all up and we put them in foil and put them in the um, campfire. It was really yummy. And Jess is the best cooker on <laughs> This piece of ice. <laughs> it's really interesting. We just built the fire on top of the ice and we weren't sure as it melted whether all the water would just put the fire out, but it didn't. It just sort of melted a little dish in the ice and it's just been, the fire's been great. It's like a perfect campfire. There's a goose nest here with six eggs in there and some of them are cracking open. And if you stand here, you can actually hear the little chicks kind of cheep, cheep, cheeping to each other. So we've got the GoPro camera sitting here to take a photo every minute and we'll leave it for a couple of hours and hopefully we'll see some of them hatch maybe. Our friends took us on an adventurous ATV ride out to a fishing spot called Starvation Cove. It's apparently where a lot of char can hang out. We didn't catch anything, not for lack of trying though. We didn't get home until about 4am in the morning. There's so many mosquitoes out here. It's insane. Look at that beautifully bright blue painted engine. I just finished repainting the whole thing to stop it rusting and the new head wasn't painted at all. So now it's all fixed up. We've just been brought out to the ice edge of Cambridge Bay and it looks like it's all melting pretty well so we should be able to get in the water sometime within the next week which is pretty exciting. We're just having a look at a Munston's old ice ship, the Maud. It's pretty amazing, they're actually going to pull it up this later this summer and try and rebuild it and put it in a museum back in, in Norway. It's been great. Well, we're not working on Teleport. We've been able to visit all the birds' nests. And because we've been here for about two weeks now, I've been watching the, the birds' nests kind of grow. So to start off with their eggs and now their little chicks, and we've been watching them get fed. It's just been amazing to see this, this cycle of the birds' life. We've just come back to the nest of peregrine falcons here, and the, the eggs are just hatching literally right now. It's amazing. <laughs> So we're just about to test out the dinghy and the outboard motor. We kept it in a heated aircraft hangar over the winter, so it should be all right. And while we're at it, we might cast in a few lines and see if we can get some char as well. Still works, awesome. Interesting, after all the little bits of ice we hit last season, the front of the, the boat still feels so smooth. There's no dings or... I don't think we need to really re anti foul at all either. This is, you know, all the weed that grew last season. Not much at all. Should probably replace these zincs, hey? For some reason, this one's corroded right away. Whereas the one on the other side, it's still perfect. This is the only bit that has me a little bit concerned. I'm not actually sure what it is. 
a couple of spots. This is from where we repaired the keel two seasons ago. It's like rust just oozing through. This is not the place to start taking apart the keel to find out. We were hoping to launch a teleport today, but the crane people said it was too windy. But instead our friend Clara at the visitor center lent us these bikes and we're trying to cycle out to Mount Pelly. But it's so windy. So it took us about an hour example of what ice can do to things as strong as a rock. You know, this is just heaps of ice shattered limestone. The water gets in there and then it freezes and it goes, gets a bit bigger and then it you know, melts again, it gets further in there, then freezes some more and you get whole rocks just end up splintering into these tiny little fragments. So after waiting a couple of days for the wind to die down, it's finally calmed down enough and we're launching today. They've got a bigger crane since last year. It's good, so hopefully it won't almost chip over like it did before just setting up now and hopefully it all goes well. The launch actually went really smoothly today which was great. Uh, you know the crane came along and just lifted up the, those cross beam poles and then we put the webbing straps on and you know gently lifted 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 and then you know some weeks it kind of went and kind of pulled free and it was a bit scary. I, the whole thing kind of just moved. I was on top with Alex uh, the guy from Kibuna um, who was kind of organizing the whole thing got lifted up, reached grass and put down in the water. Um, it's a bit dodgy for one second because as soon as they took all the webbing straps off, uh, the boat was then just you know, drifting with the wind and we actually put it straight onto the onto the where the bottom shelves up and we actually ran ground. Yeah, but it was so nice to have that feeling of being back in the water again. Oh, we're afloat and the engine started. So all our boxes of food just arrived. This is about two months worth of food. So we finally got all this stuff on board, so now we've just got to work out where to put it all. Whoa, check out all the biscuits! I'm just about to go up the mast. Uh, I've got a few things to check up there. Looks like the, the masthead lights have been maybe knocked or blown during the winter. They look like they're falling off. Check out that and work out how we're going to fix our new wind speed meter up there as well. It's going to be really annoying to have to get all this back on top of the mast and somehow just attach it to that top bit. There's no way really of attaching it except glue which is, looks really dodgy, so. Right, so I've got all that stuff off and I've sanded the bottom flat again. So now I guess I just gotta try and glue it back on. You see the lightning rod that goes at the top of the mast. The end is just kind of worn out. Just almost fell out when I touched it. So I have to fix that up. Probably cut it off shorter and then drill a new hole for a shear pin to go through. So the current project is I just got a bit of stainless steel and borrowed a grinder and cut it off. This is going to go on the top of the mast. That's a bit of the mast that fell off. It goes on there, then our lights, and then that gives us somewhere to put our um, the wind wind speed uh, indicator as well. Just got to now go and cut some holes. I hate cutting holes in stainless. It's so hard. Luckily, the guys at the local workshop used their plasma cutter for me, which was great. We've got a bit of a problem. I don't know if you can see there, but there's quite a lot of water in the bilge and we pumped it out last night. So somehow or other, water is getting into our boat. We're sinking. It does seem like there's water definitely coming here somewhere. But where from? So I think I finally found out where this water is coming from. Uh, it seems to be dripping from the one of the hoses on the on the toilet. Uh, maybe it's just wasn't done up properly or something from uh, after wintering over or something. But just going drip, 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 which is more than enough to fill up the bilge like that overnight. So that's a relief to have found that. So we're not sinking. So we just came back from being out from the boat for a while, and there's more water in the bilge. So obviously the other leak I found wasn't the only leak. So we're still sinking. But where from? So I discovered last night where some more of the water was coming in into the bilge and it seems it's actually coming in through the through the hull. Um, there's a bit down in the back of the bilge where water's just going drip, drip, just coming in from the wall of fiberglass there. So that means that the the wood behind that area must be must be rotten and water pressure from the outside is just coming through the right through the hull and dripping through this, this layer of fiberglass into the bilge, which is pretty devastating to 
fix that area. I don't know if you can do that in a place like Cambridge Bay, and certainly not in the next week before we were hoping to, or before we had to leave. I don't know if it was just over the, over the winter, when it got so cold that it kind of shrunk heaps and then cracked or something, when it, when it shrunk or something, I'm not sure. And every couple of hours, the, the level of the bilge kind of goes. We're thinking of getting all of this stuff out, completely drying the whole thing, like paper towel, mm -hmm. and then uh, watching for a couple of hours mm -hmm. and see if maybe there's little bits coming from other places. Or no, I think for the next three months you're not in trouble. Little lake with a little big shit. Yeah. So it's been a tough couple of days trying to work out what we're, what we're going to do with all these leaks into the field. Um, but it, most importantly, it doesn't seem like it's anywhere very structural on the boat. Like all the wood around all that area is still really solid. Um, yeah, so basically all we can really do is just head on to Nome. And it doesn't, I don't think it's going to affect us getting there at all. You know, I don't think from a safety point of view it's that serious. It's just a, a very slow leak and we'll just pump it out every day. Yeah. So maybe next season we'll have to come and spend another season of, of boat building, which is a bit depressing. You know, it's, it's going to be pretty major to, to fix it. We've got to rip out all the fiberglass from the whole bilge and then go backwards and try and work out where it's coming from and so on. But, um, so depressing, but um, nothing, to, nothing to worry about this season. We've just been invited out to an elders camp. They've been um, hunting and cooking traditional food like seal and char, and it's been really amazing. So the wind's really picking up, so our wind turbine is doing a great job at filling our batteries with heaps of power. Uh, it tells us that for about 15 to 18 knots of wind out there at the moment, we're getting anywhere really from you know, two and a half up to about 10 amps from the wind turbine. So that's pretty good. This little clip from the wind vane self-steering gear is broken. So I'm trying to make a new one uh, from a bit of plastic piping that I've got. So I've kind of cut this little bit. I'm not sure if you can see that. Cut this little piece off. I'm just gonna try and file it nice and clean and then make a little base for it and then kind of put a bolt through it. I reckon that'll be pretty much the same thing. We're just at our friend Brent's cabin and he's got a whole bunch of char in the net and uh, a small seal as well. So we're just cutting that ready to dry it. <laughs> I'm just about to deliberately fall in the water just so I can practice getting out again. So today I climbed up to the top of Mount Pelly here and spent all day making a nice little stone uh, chair and table over there and down there you can see a little message written down there and then convinced Jess that we needed to come camping tonight and came up and, and showed her this little spot and popped her the question. And I said yes. So we're just going to fill up on diesel this morning. The weather's looking good to leave on Monday, so we're just getting the last bit of things ready. Uh, Cambridge Bay is actually in a diesel crisis at the moment, and they can only give us 150 litres. That's all that's left in the tank, in the tanker truck. So we're lucky to get that. Some of our amazing friends in Cambridge Bay threw us a farewell party last night. They made us an incredible cake that looked exactly like Teleport with so much attention to detail. It was very hard to cut an amazing piece of art. Our time here at Cambridge Bay has pretty much come to an end. We're sailing out of here on Monday, just a couple of days away. Yeah, so we're just doing all our final preparations on board. We'll be looking at the, the charts. We have the French yachty look over to look at the charts as well and the ice charts as well. You know, it's such a narrow window we've got. Each year it just melts very briefly and then freezes back over again. So we've got to get out of here as soon as we can. Yeah, we've also been out for a few midnight sun sails with some of our friends, which has been nice. really fun. Yeah, so I guess uh, we better better head off. Yeah. Hope all goes well.